Sometimes Apple's provided Clang compiler that ships with Xcode isn't the best choice for C or C++ development because it doesn't play nicely with some third-party libraries or it doesn't support the latest language features you would like to try out. In this video I'm going to show you how to install alternative compilers, namely GCC and Clang, on macOS. Welcome everybody, my name is Cons. I make videos on programming, computer science and everything in between. And if that sounds like your cup of tea, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any uploads. The first thing we're going to do is to install a custom version of GCC. And for that we're going to use Homebrew, which is a package manager for Mac OS. If you haven't installed Homebrew yet, you can find it on their brew.sh and then just paste this line into your command line and Brew will install itself from there. I have already installed Brew on my system, so we can start installing GCC and we just look for GCC in the Brew repository by entering Brew search GCC. And we can see now there pops up a list of several things we can install here. I already installed some version of GCC, but for this video in particular, I would like to install version 12 of GCC. In order to do that, I'm going to enter brew install GCC at 12. And now we can see that brew takes all of the heavy lifting of installing GCC on our Mac. With GCC installed, let's check out if it actually works. And for that, we're going into the directory where it was installed by Brew. Brew always installs everything under slash opt slash homebrew seller. Then the name of the package we have just installed, which is GCC at 12. And in here we can find a directory which has the full qualified version name of GCC, which is 12.3.0. And if we go into that and into the bin directory, we can find the GCC-12 and G++-12 executable. So in order to run those, we're going to enter GC uh, slash bin slash G++-12 for G++, which will present us with an error message because we haven't provided any input data that has to be compiled. But that is a good sign because that tells us that G++ was installed successfully. And we can also do the same for GCC and we can see the same error message which tells us that there is no input data that can be compiled, but both are working. However, sometimes the path where Homebrew installs the compiler is hard to remember. And therefore we're going to use a little shortcut provided by Brew which helps us to return the path to the installed packages, which is brew minus minus prefix and then we enter the package we have installed and for us that is GCC at 12 and that will return the path where GCC at 12 was actually installed on our system. If we enter that into a subcommand with brew with dollar parentheses brew minus minus prefix GCC at 12 slash bin slash GCC minus 12 we can actually run GCC from there and the same goes for G++. So with the brew minus minus prefix, we can get a little shortcut and we don't have to remember where brew actually installed GCC. If you would like to install an alternative version of Clang other than the Apple provided one, we can also have a look in brew and see if there is a different version of Clang we can install on our system. So we enter brew search Clang and we get a list but none of those items here are actually Clang. We have Clang build analyzer and Clang format, but there is no Clang compiler. And in order to install Clang, we have to use the official GitHub repository of Clang. And we can find it under github.com slash LVM slash LVM project. And on this site, we can find releases. As the time of recording, the latest version is 17.0.6. When we click on that, we get a whole list of different pre-builds and we make sure we download something that includes Clang plus LLVM. Otherwise, we won't get the compiler. We only get LLVM and not the Clang front end. And if we have an ARM Mac with Apple Silicon, we have to download a version that includes ARM64 Apple Darwin, which is this one over here. So we click that to download. 
When the download has finished successfully, we head into our downloads directory and have a look. And here we can find the Clang Plus LLVM tar archive, which we can now unpack using tar minus XVF and then the name of the tar archive. And this will unpack the whole Clang and LLVM pre-built into a separate directory, which we can then use to install Clang on our system. When the unpacking of the tar archive was successful, we can have a look into it, into the newly created directory, which is clang plus LVM. We can see there is a bin directory and in here we can actually see clang plus plus and clang. However, we don't want to run clang from our downloads directory. So we're going to move it to the appropriate location, which is under opt, because opt is the default directory for all third-party tools which are not bundled with an operating system when using a Unix system such as macOS. So for that we first create a subdirectory under slash opt with sudo mkdir minus p slash opt slash clang plus lvm and we have to use sudo because this is a write protected directory and we need root privileges to create a new directory in there. So we have to enter our password. And when that is done, we can move the directory we have just unpacked into slash opt slash clang plus LVM. We do that with sudo move the name of the directory we have just unpacked and then slash clang slash uh, clang plus LVM and the version number. I won't add the um, architecture string because we already know on which computer we are. So we enter that and now clang is installed under slash opt slash clang LVM slash clang LVM minus 17.0.6. So if we have a look over there slash opt slash clang plus LVM clang plus LVM 17 bin, we can see we have clang and clang plus plus. We can also call them from here clang if we remove uh, ls in the front and we can see it also reports that there are no input files but this is a good thing because we haven't provided any input files but we can see that clang actually works and we can do the same with clang plus plus we can so see it also reports that there are no input files now that we have installed gcc and clang we don't always want to use them by entering their full path we rather want something that sets the default compiler on our system for any other tool that might use a C or C++ compiler. And therefore we're going to use the environment vari variables CC or CXX. When we have a look in our terminal and enter echo $CC, we can see it's actually not set, which is the default case. And that is also the case for CXX. But we can set those variables with export cc and then enter the path to the compiler we have just installed for this example i'm going to use the clang compiler which we can find under opt clang plus lvm clang plus lvm version number bin clang we export that and we can now enter dollar cc which will then call the clang compiler so we don't have to enter the full path we can just enter dollar cc and $CC is also used by tools such as CMake or Makefiles in order to use the default compiler we would like to use in our system. We can do the same for CXX. We enter Clang++ and then export CXX. And then when we call CXX, we can see we use the Clang++ compiler. And with those two environment variables, we set the default compiler for our system. And because we don't always want to enter the export statements for CC and CXX every time we open up a new terminal, we are going to add those export statements into our setshellrc. So let's open the setshellrc. And in here, we add two export statements. This time, I'm going to use the export statements for GCC 12. We enter export, then the path to GCC 12 and G++ 12. We save that. Then we make sure we reload our setshellrc with source. And if we now enter CC, we can see it now uses GCC 12. And the same goes for CXX, which now uses G++ 12. 
Don't forget to join my Discord server in order to get in contact with like-minded people to share ideas on programming and computer science and also show us your projects you are working on. You can find the link to my Discord server down below in the description. Now let's check out if our newly installed C and C++ compilers actually work and therefore I prepared two Hello World applications which we can find over here. Hello C and Hello CC. One is the C version, one is the C++ version. When we now use our compiler command $cc oh hello hello c, we can see that it doesn't actually compile because the compiler complains that it can't find the standard io.h include. And when we do the same for the C++ version with cxx, we can see there is even more problems. And this is because the Clang and GCC compiler we installed on our system can't actually find the standard includes and libraries which are usually provided by the operating system. This is because macOS puts them into a non-standard location. But we can mitigate that by informing the compiler where to find those. Xcode actually provides a command line tool which shows us where the standard library is installed. And for that we use xcrun-show-sdkpath and in there are all the includes and libraries we need to successfully compile C and C++ code with our alternative compilers. Now we can inform our compilers where the includes and the libraries to link against are. We do that by entering the same command as we have done before, cc, and then we add i minus sys root, the path to the SDK, and minus l and the path to the SDK with minus with slash usr slash lib. And if we do that, we can see our program now compiles successfully and we, we enter hello, the hello world also appears on our command line. We can do the same for the C++ version with CXX and also adding isis root, xc run and so on for the includes and the libraries to link against. And if we run that, we can also see that we can successfully run the Hello World application this time in C++. So we don't always have to expand our compiler commands with this information. We can use another set of environment variables to inform all the tools that are using C and C++ compilers on our systems where to find those libraries and includes. For that, we go into our shell RC and add an export statement for CF flags, CXX flags, and LD flags. And as we can see, those contain the expanded compiler commands we have just added in order to compile our hello world com commands. The CF flags is for all C programs, and we also add CF flags in the back here again such that we expand the CF flags variable if we have said something else before. The same goes for CXX flags, which contains the same string. However, this time it is for the C++ compiler. And in the end, we have the LD flags, which says our C and C++ compilers where to find the libraries to link against. So if we can save that, all the tools such as make or CMake are going to use the C flags, CXX flags, and LD flags in order to compile C and C++ programs on our systems correctly. If you want to use several different C and C++ compilers on your system, you always have to enter the export CC and export CXX statements every time you want to switch between those compilers. But this is very tedious and therefore we are going to use a set shell function in order to switch on the fly between different compilers. So open up uh, your set shell RC and then instead of stating the CC and CXX export statements like here, we're going to enclose them into a function. So we enter set GCC 12, then empty parentheses and brackets and put the export statements in here. And this is a function where, when, when it is called, calls the export statements and sets CC and CXX to the paths of GCC and G++. And we can do the same for the Clang paths. We just enclose those into a different function and enter Clang 
17. And every time we open up a new terminal, we would like to set GCC as our default compiler. So after we have declared all the different functions to switch between those compilers, we enter the compiler we would like to set as a default and its setting function right so. So when we open up a new terminal, set GCC12 is always called and GCC12 will be our default compiler from now on. So let's check that out. We enter source set shell RC. If we enter CC, we can see it points to GCC12 and CXX points to GC G12. And if we enter set clang 17, we can see that C CC now points to clang and CXX now points to clang plus plus. This concludes this video on how to install alternative C and C++ compilers on macOS, how to fix compiler errors with those compilers and how to switch between them using a single set shell function. I hope you liked this video and if you have made it so far, make sure to comment with a computer emoji in the comments down below. Give this video a like and I hope to see you soon and wish you a pleasant day.